Hi, welcome to the I'm Free Project 2012 Overcoming Lessons series. Tonight we're going to talk about action. How to take action for walking from homosexuality into God's holiness. How to walk from same-sex attractions into God's righteousness. Tonight we're going to compound upon the lessons that we've learned previously when we were speaking about holiness, purpose and will, and taking self-inventory. So tonight, get your pens, get your pads, let's learn, let's get into God's Word, and see what God has to say about this overcoming process and how to take action. Okay, now we've all heard the phrase, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. And as it relates to homosexuality and walking out of homosexuality into God's holiness, if you don't start anything, there won't be anything. You have to start something. You have to start moving. You have to take action, as this lesson describes. You have to start moving, walking towards God's holiness and God's righteousness. Uh, using the things that you've learned before through holiness, purpose, and will, taking self-inventory. And using those things as a springboard to help you to take the action that you need to start walking out of homosexuality. Now, in James 2 and 26, it says, For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So it's by your faith and by the action of your faith you show that you are delivered. So it's more than just saying that, yes, I'm delivered from homosexuality. But by faith, you walk and you show that you are delivered. And how do you do that? By the intake of God's word. By taking God's word, the practical application of his word, and walking that out on a day-by-day -day basis. Because the battle is going to come. The enemy is always going to come to you and try to trip you up and try to make you fall. Because he sees exactly where you're going. He sees exactly the path that you're on and going to try to make you stumble. So you have to face the battle. You have to stand firm in the battle. And you have to show that through your face you can faith you can face this battle and you can move forward and progress in God. Alright now let's talk about staying on course. Now while we're walking through this and the battle against the temptations of homosexuality and same-sex attractions or sexual bondage, uh, we can find practical applications in God's Word that will help us and lead us each and every day that we must do in order to maintain a life of sexual integrity and walking in God's holiness and righteousness. Now what I'm going to do is read a few scriptures, and as I'm reading the scriptures, let this word get inside you. Pick up your Bible, open it up to this, these scriptures, open it up to the chapter verses, and read them. Say them over and over as you're going through this. And watch this word go on the inside and cleanse you out and give you the strength to walk by faith and not by sight. So the first one we're going to read is Hebrews 12 and 1. It asks us to lay aside every weight and sin. Hebrews 12 and 1, lay aside every weight and sin. Again, this is stuff that we have to do ourselves. Now, you know the things that may be in your life that may be a weight and a sin. You know, so the weight may be something that, uh, that it may be something enjoyable that you like doing, but it has become a weight and it's something that just continually, every day, this weighs you down and keeps you out of the presence of God. may not necessarily be a bad thing, but something that uh, maybe has become sort of an idol in your life. You know, maybe if you were on Facebook all day long. You know, even I have to uh, keep track of that to make sure that I'm not on Facebook all day long. Uh, and even uh, those things that may be considered sinful. So he says in Hebrews 12 and 1 that we lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us. Then in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show yourself approved. Study God's word. There's no better way of, allowing, uh, of, of gaining power than reading God's word. And the more that you get God's Word, as it says in John 1 and 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He dwelt among men. And so when you get more and more of God's Word on the inside of you, it's like you get more and more Christ built up on the inside of you. And it creates, it, and it girds you up when the time of temptation comes, when the enemy tries to trip you up. It girds you up. So that's something that you have to do, that we have to do. We have to show, study to show ourselves approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Then in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2, it says to abstain from all forms of evil. Now we all know what things that may be around us or what may be in our life uh, that can have the, uh, the appearance of evil. 
So he, he tells us to abstain from all forms of evil. Again, this is a condition that you must do. These are the things that I'm, I'm reading here that the Bible says that you have to do. And sometimes I think we get it mixed up and, and we're waiting on God to do this big thing. A lot of times God is asking us or telling us uh, explicitly, these are the things that you have to do in order for uh, these things to happen, in order for uh, even a, a, a stronger portion of your deliverance to come forth. These are the things that you have to do. Lay aside every weight in sin. Study to show yourself approved. Abstain from all forms of evil. And then 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3-4. through 4, Know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor. Know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor. You have to learn how to, uh, to keep yourself. You know how to learn how to possess your own body in sanctification and honor. Again, that's something that you have to do. So when the flesh rises, when the flesh want to go out and do something that it shouldn't be doing, want to uh, call the, that person that, that keep you bound in sexual sin, you have to know how to maintain your vessel in sanctification and honor. Again, pointing back to what we have to do as believers, making those decisions that pleases God. And then we have Romans 13, verse 14. Make no provision for the flesh. Don't open the door for the flesh. Do not open the door for the flesh. If you have certain magazines that trip you up, get rid of them. If you have certain websites that trip you up, don't go back to them. Put a filter on your computer. I mean, if you, if you have uh, certain friends uh, that are still within your circle that are leading you back into uh, homosexuality and sexual bondage, walk away. It's better to invest the time with God and lead to life than to invest the time with people and lead you to hell. So remember, we have to do these things. These are the decisions that we have to do. And then Romans 6, uh, verse 12 through 14, to present your members as members of righteousness. These things here, these extensions on my body, it is for me to present them as members of righteousness, not unrighteousness. This is what we have to do. Your body belongs to God, and your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you share your body with someone who's not your husband or your wife, you are creating soul ties. And you are presenting your members as members of unrighteousness into uh, things that are unholy and ungodly. And God says that, that these are the things that should not even be named among the saints. That should not even be named among, among us. Although we know that these things do occur. And yes, God is there to forgive you if you make a mistake, if you fall, if you falter. We get on our knees and we repent, but we get back up and we start all over once again. But God says, just think about it. Stop for a minute and don't even present your members as members of unrighteousness, but present them as members of righteousness. And again, that's Romans 6, verses 12 through 14. And now remember this verse here. If you don't remember anything else, remember this verse. It's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. You know, sometimes we feel like we're by ourselves in this walk and we feel like there's no hope and there's no one for us to uh, talk to and, 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 and we have no strength. But God is performing a work in you right now. If you're watching this video, God is performing a work in you. And he who is faithful, he is faithful to perform that within you. The work he's All right, doing. now, in continuing to take action, we have to run the race. And for this race, we're running for Jesus. And I know that sounds cliche, but we are running for Jesus because Jesus is the goal and being more Christ-like uh, is, is the goal and that's a part of the prize. And so now we're going to go into 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Now here Paul writes, Do you not know that those who run in a race all want run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Now in the Christian walk, you are running a race. And in running your race, there is opposition in you running this race. And in the overcoming process of SSA, trust and believe there is opposition. I mean, there's even social opposition. There's spiritual opposition. There's even uh, opposition between, uh, from friends and family, people who will tell you uh, that you can never get over it or you'll never be set free from that. Or they're always trying to keep you in that same bondage or that same image that they used to see you maybe 10 to 15 years ago or even a few months ago. 
But you have to understand that you are running a race and you're running forward and forgetting those things are behind and pressing towards the goal of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And now in doing so, let's look at verse 25. He says, for everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. So you have to understand you have to be temperate in all that you do as you run in this race, as you're running uh, to, into holiness and from sexual bondage, from sexual sin. You have to be temperate in all things. You can't just do anything. And the word temperate is defined as exercising moderation and self-restraint. So you have to moderate your life. You have to show some self-restraint and self-control, which is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that's in Galatians 5. You have to show some self-control self and some restraint in your life. And moderate the things that you allow in your life. And moderate the things that are around your life. So just keeping that in mind as you're walking away from same-sex attraction, as you're walking away, as you're running away uh, from homosexuality, that you have to show uh, moderation and you have to practice some self-restraint. And so often in sports, and you notice that even in sports, those who are in sports, they are very disciplined in what they do. When you think about the Olympians and, and those who compete in the Olympics, they are very temperate and they are very disciplined because their goal is to win that ultimate prize of that gold medal at the end of that race. Just for that brief moment, they're running that race. They are very, very temperate in the things they've done before. And, and many of them, they train for years since they were children just to compete for those few minutes and just for that one goal. Now, should not our, our, uh, 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 our same passion and goal be the same as those who, who are running for a, a, a physical prize? Shouldn't we have that same passion? Shouldn't we have that same desire for something that is much weightier than a gold medal? So keeping that in mind, it says, therefore I run thus, and this is verse 26, Paul says, not with uncertainty. In other words, Paul knew what he was running for. He was running to obtain the prize of Christ Jesus. So know what your purpose and will is in doing this run. Knowing that your purpose, your purpose is to be more Christ-like. And in being more Christ-like, trust me, you will begin to walk away from those old passions and desires that you used to have for same-sex attractions and homosexuality. And it just won't be the same. There's no way you can pursue holiness and righteousness and still have the same mindset that you had months ago or even years ago or five years ago. There's no way. When you're doing it with the right mind and the right heart, there's no way that you will still be the same as you were five years ago. So Paul says, uh, do you know God's, uh, well, in understanding that Paul says in verse 27, but I discipline my body and bring it under subjection. Now this is the perfect example of what we must do. We must discipline our body and bring it into perfect subjection, bring it under subjection. And the subjection that we bring it under is God's word. And you have to make that decision to bring your body under subjection. You have to tell it to be quiet when it wants to holler. You have to tell your body, no, not today. It's like if you were trying to lose weight. You have to tell yourself, no, I will not eat that. No, I will not partake of this food. And understand you have to be temperate and moderate in all things. So you have to be the one to discipline your body and bring it under subjection. Again, those who run races, those who are trying out for Olympics, those who are in any type of competition, boxing, sports, they discipline themselves so that they can be in tip-top shape for the performance and for the show that they have to put on. And we should be the same way for our race and running and walking with Jesus. And that we are passionate about it. We put forth all our effort. And that we go forward not looking back. And we become moderate and self-disciplined in all things. So and just remember God doesn't do this. This is something that we have to do. God doesn't do it. And it's up to us to discipline our bodies. And to bring it under that subjection. And so that it lines up with God's will. Lines up with God's word. Where we abstain from sexual immorality. That it not be named among the saints. That we can present our bodies as members of righteousness and not members of unrighteousness. 
so that we can stand before God with a clean and clear conscience, knowing that we have done what he's called us to do. And what you'll realize that as time passes, again, those desires for same-sex attraction and homosexuality will continue to diminish and become weaker and weaker and become unimportant in your life. Till you find yourself years later feeling like, wow, I don't even think like that anymore. I don't even feel that way anymore. Because you can't base your life on a previous feeling. And you can't design your whole life around that feeling. But understanding that as you're growing in God, God changes your mind, changes your heart, and He changes your, your, even your emotional state as it relates to how you identify yourself and you find out who you are in God as you continue to run your race and you continue to seek after the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus and Him alone. All right. Thank you for joining me again this week. I pray to God that this has been a blessing to you, that you are receiving some form of impartation, that you are receiving some form of growth through these videos, that you are learning something, that you are gaining ground, that you are going forward in Jesus Christ. Again, the, the purpose of this is just to give people a tool to be able to learn, uh, read the Word, study, and find themselves growing in God's grace and growing further and further away from that which has held them bound. So I pray that that is happening for you. So join me next time, I would say next week, but next time when we'll be talking about cultivating godly relationships and how that plays a part in the overcoming process. We thank you for joining us and remember always Jesus Christ is Lord.